Breslin Center has seen a lot of great basketball games over the years, both at the collegiate level and at this Michigan High School State Championship level. Dare I say, this one, this Class B State title tilt that we got on tap for you here tonight could be one of the better ones in recent memory. How are you, everyone? Matt Shepard along with Greg Kelser. Glad you stayed with us here on Fox Sports Detroit for the state championship. River, River Rouge and Marshall. Number one River Rouge and unbeaten Marshall. And Greg Kelser, when you look at River Rouge, we're looking at some possible history made here tonight. Never in the 82-year history of this state championship tournament have four Metro Detroit area teams walked off the court with state titles on the same day. But when you look at River Rouge, you can't help but wonder how Ben Pierce has been able to keep this thing together under adverse conditions. You have to give Ben Pierce a lot of credit. First of all, River Rouge, two players, an assistant coach and head coach Lamonte Stone, all suspended prior to the tournament. Now, Matt, it's not unusual for teams to try and find extra motivation, and for River Rouge, that has been it. Coming together under these adverse circumstances has propelled them to this point. And when you talk about the Panthers, you got to mention tradition. 12 state titles, but not one since 1972. So you know Dewez Henderson and company want to get the job done tonight, don't you? Well, you know, Dewez Henderson, he's a superb basketball player. He is already committed to the University of Iowa. Did not have a great game against Hastings yesterday, but they didn't need it. I mean, this is more than just a one-man team, but you know he wants to go out on a big note. I expect him to have a great game. But one player that has been superb all year, Brent Darby, the six-foot-one junior guard, 26 points, just good all-around play, good presence on the floor for River Rouge, and of course Charles Cage. Cage may be the best player on this team. Cage can erase a lot of defensive mistakes that his teammates might have out on the perimeter. He's a tremendous shot blocker and rebounder. Marshall's 26 wins, the most in school history, but Greg, they get it done with more than just good basketball players, really good athletes. They have good athletes, they have a wonderful attitude, and these guys just work real hard. And Ryan Van Dyke, he's an All-State football quarterback coming to MSU. Obviously, he's a leader, and they're going to need his leadership on the floor tonight. He did not have a stellar game yesterday in that win over Petoskey, scoring-wise, but he played superb defense, and he grabbed nine rebounds. They'll need all that and all the leadership from him if they're to win tonight. Two other guys that we'll keep an eye on for Marshall. First of all, Andrew Neidlinger. Neidlinger was pretty good yesterday with 15 points. He's a big guy that will not back down, and he's almost a carbon copy of Brad Bigelow. Two guys strong, both six feet, seven inches tall, they may have the bulk to bang with Rouge, and you've got to be physical with River Rouge. Well, they're going to vlog a lot of court time. I'll tell you who's logged a lot of court time, maybe more than anybody else in the state tournament. That's our own John Keating. John? All right, Matt, thanks. We talk of Marshall and to Marshall. Marshall Thomas, the uh, head basketball coach at Saginaw High, joins us. River Rouge comes in tonight striving to be the best team in Class B, really after having been recognized all season as the best team overall okay. throughout the state of Michigan. Yeah, preseason rating has them as being the best team in the state, and they have lived up to that expectation. They are talented at every position on the floor. River Rouge, though, will have to solve Marshall's interior passing. I don't think Rouge has probably seen a team that passes the basketball as well as Marshall does. I'd agree with you. Marshall does a lot of great duck-ins. And when I say duck-ins, what I mean by that is simply that they'll step in front of their defender from the weak side and receive a pass. All right, that will be what the River Rouge will have to uh, master here tonight in the finale at the Breslin Center. Let's go back courtside to Matt Shepard. Hard to believe, guys, but the success of these two teams, they have chips on their shoulders. It's ready to rock at the Breslin Center. We're ready to bring it to you with the starting lineups and the opening tip on Fox Sports Detroit right after this. And now let's meet the starting lineup for this evening's game between the Redskins of Marshall and the Panthers of River Rouge. For Marshall, at forward, 6'5", senior, 31, Brad Bigelow. For River Rouge, at forward, 6'1", senior, 23, Gene Evans. The other forward for the Redskins, 6'6", six, six, senior, 33, Ryan Van Dyke. For the Panthers at forward, 6'7", senior, 34, Duez Henderson. At center for Marshall, 6'7", senior, 34, Andrew Neidlinger. 
for River Rouge at center. 6'8", senior, 50, Charles Cage. At the guards for Marshall, six foot senior, number 10, Andy McCormick. Guard for River Rouge, 5'9", senior, 22, Edward Johnson. The other guard for Marshall, six foot senior, 12, Doug Searle. And for the Rouge, 6'1", junior, 24, Brent Darby. Head coach of the Redskins, Dan Cogman. Head coach of the Panthers, Ben Pierce. Evening's official. Ben Pierce, Mike just Smith. his seventh game as head coach of the River Rouge Panthers, has talked a number of times to Malavante Smith, or Stone, excuse me, and uh, obviously has talked to Lofton Green, the legend in River Rouge high school basketball. And of course, Ben Pierce played for Lofton Green back in 1976 when they were runners up. Some changes in the rules as far as the high school game and of course college and basketball, Greg. Well, they finally gave the high school teams two 20 second timeouts to go along with their three full. All players must stay out of the lane until the ball touches the rim on free throws. Keep in mind in the NBA, guys can leave sort of as the shot leaves the player's hand. Late game field goals, the clock does not stop, and of course there is no shot clock. We should also mention that if you use a 20 and make it into a full, you lose both of those timeouts. You saw the road to the finals for River Rouge and Marshall. Marshall very impressive in the win over Petoskey, and River Rouge had no problem with Hastings. This is the matchup you've been waiting for, everybody's been waiting for. Marshall 26-0, River Rouge 26 up, just one blemish on their record. It lost in the third week of the season to Romulus, but they avenged him two full. Twice they came back and beat Romulus. This should be a great game. Our officials tonight, Michael Smith, Todd Hoke, and Terry Walbrook. All got great Kelsey's autographs before we we're ready to tip things <laughs> off here at the Breslin Center. It'll be Cage and Nidlinger. A couple of big fellas, the heavyweights, and Marshall will control, moving right to left. Marshall will move the basketball. And if you're River Rouge, you have to be patient defensively, not get out of position, and certainly not create fouls like that out on the floor. You want to stay out of foul trouble and really force Marshall to have to work for their shots. Brent Darby, a physical player. He picks up the first personal. 26 points in the win the other night. 26 in a huge win over Country Day in the regional. Van Dyke will inbound, and Greg has talked about his athletic ability and coming to play for Nick Saban and the MSU Spartans as quarterback. Down low, blocked by Cage. You're going to have to take Cage somewhere on the floor. You're not going to be able to just turn and shoot in his face. He has excellent timing. You're not going to see him go for a lot of pump fakes. He's very solid on the defensive end. Henderson underneath the cage. He's two time, but forces it off the window. It doesn't fall. The follow up by the Panthers. No. Cage is there for the putback, and they draw first blood. And that's where Cage can hurt you. You notice Rouge went into him in the post, was not very fluid with the shot. But Steal by Ed Johnson, Greg, but he stepped on the line. Uh huh. More on Cage. He's very good at following his own shot and following the misses of his teammates. So important to put a body on Cage. Here Cage is inside. No one blocking him out. He'll get a ton if you don't put a body on him. Neidlinger forces it off the glass and it's down. <laughs> Neidlinger with a little mid-air adjustment. He was about to get that shot crushed by Cage, but he double-clutched and got it off the window successfully. Cage, a number of schools looking at him, obviously. UAD, Seton Hall really likes Tommy Amaker. Turnover. Marshall back the other way. McCormick passed the midcourt stripe. A story to tell for that kid. Remember, Marshall hasn't won a state championship since 44. Van Dyke's long bomb doesn't fall. Panthers want a break. Stop, pop, good. Big bucket there for Gene Evans. Marshall breaking the press with a quick pass and then a dribble drive by Searles. Marshall's ball handling ability will be severely tested in this game. Van Dyke has an answer, and it's 4-all with six minutes left to go in the first. 
So far, not much of a problem. They move the ball, they get it to the open man, and if you're River Rouge, you're pressing and scrambling all over the floor. You know that you're going to give up some good looks. But, you're in, but Rouge's uh, intent is to quicken the pace and force Marshall to play a little faster than they're really comfortable. Steal by McCormick. You also know if you're River Rouge, if it's Marshall Ball Club, because there are so many players playing football and soccer, they will hammer you if you oh, get yeah. inside. And another foul on the outside. This one on Ed Johnson. You can see Johnson up tight. Little contact there. But if the officials are going to call it that tightly, you have to be able to adjust as a player on the floor. Here's Searle's left side. Now McCormick. Marshall trying to set up for a shot underneath. Neidlinger with a pump fake. Here's the patience we talked about. Marshall will use that each time down the floor to get the high percentage shot. Searles in the lane, off the glass, no, long rebound, out to Johnson, up ahead to Darby, one-on-one -on -one with Van Dyke, Darby will take it straight at him, but he traveled. And unlike Brent Darby game so far, this is a guy who plays very under control and in the semis was outstanding. This is the finals, and it's not uncustom to see teams a little bit nervous to start out. You like the way they're trying to break the trap, Greg? I like the job they're doing. Three on one. The foul of Cage with a huge defensive play. Neidlinger. And I think we got another walk. All of that was Cage. Three second violation right there because everybody's looking around to see where Charles Cage is. We talked about him in the open. He's very good at erasing the mistakes. He's the one that allows Rouge to be so aggressive out on the perimeter defensively. They can gamble all they want. He's there to cover up. You know as a big guy that you get those early blocks and suddenly your confidence is that much higher. Oh, yeah. Johnson. Here's Henderson. Underneath the cage. Cage is two-time. Henderson thought about the three. Like that matchup, Henderson and Van Dyke. Oh, yeah. Henderson doesn't score as much as he did a year ago, but his defense is better, and he says he, his leadership has made him that much of a better player. You know why you put so much emphasis defensively on guys like Cage and Henderson and Darby? You better start thinking about Evans. Evans has already knocked down two jumpers, looks very confident at this stage. He's given River Rouge a three-point lead at 7-4, with 4.05 left to go in the first. Van Dyke's turnaround. Rims home. A kind rule for the All-State quarterback. You know, a lot of teams that face Rouge come in intimidated. They read the papers. They know how strong this team is. One of the best in America, River Rouge. But it doesn't look like they're going to be intimidated. Marshall, not today. Cage's little jump hook in the lane wouldn't fall. He worked on that this summer. But he realizes at the next level, he'll have to perfect it a little bit more. Bigelow. Little spin move. Off the glass. No follow-up door. Well, Cage went over that time to try to block the shot. Therefore, no one able to block out Bigelow. Bigelow able to get it off the glass uncontested, the putback. 8-7, Neidlinger's bucket has given Marshall a one-point lead. Darby's drive will be halted because of the whistle. The foul will go against Searles. substitution for Ben Pierce and he brings in number 42 Jamar Turner 8-7 Marshall has the lead with 3-11 left to go on the first it's everything we thought and more come on back to the Breslin Center the Class B State Finals on Fox Sports Detroit Our Class B State Finals flashback takes you back to 1994. The title game, St. Clair Lakeshore, and their All-State guard, Travis Conlon, down a point to East Here Grand Rapids. With five Travis seconds to go, and Conlon wins it with a 10-foot jumper. Our Class B championship flashback. And how appropriate, Travis Conlon wins it for Lakeshore. He now joins our own John Keating courtside here in enemy territory, John, at the Breslin Center.
All right, Matt, thanks. Yeah, with Travis Conlon, this shot happened four years ago, and, and I'm, you've had a nice college career. How many times have you relived that, that shot from your high school days? Oh, I relive it every day. Uh, it's a boyhood dream of mine that came true, fortunately, for us at Lakeshore, and uh, I'm just glad I was able to make the shot. You come back into this building on state championship Saturday. What are the feelings like? You, you get that those uh, those feelings back again that you want to be out here? Yeah, I'm nervous right now staying on the court right now because I can remember being down one with five seconds left. So it's a good feeling, and I just, uh, I'm just glad, like I said, I made it. Hey, Travis, thanks. Congratulations on a fine career at Michigan. Let's go back to Matt Shepard. John, good stuff. Thank you very much. 8-7, Marshall on top. 3.05 left to go in the first quarter. Darby will pop for three, and it's off the back rim. Loose ball out of bounds. Redskins ball. Not a lot of movement that time from River Rouge, and a good job of blocking out underneath the basket by Marshall. Darby just a junior. Long pass down court. Lay in by Bigelow. Fall, Turner wipes the glass clean. What, was that Van Dyke on the pass? Yes, it was. That was the QB on the money. Touchdown, Marshall. Got to convert that layup, however. Maybe he caught it out of bounds. Pushed out of bounds, huh? Couldn't convert. Here's a triple try. Panthers, no. Another long rebound, and McCormick tries to save it. And it'll be off him. A little quiet for Dwez Henderson so far, but we talked about he does more than just score. Yeah, Dwez Henderson this year has tried to become a more complete basketball player, doing a lot of things good out on the floor for the Panthers. But in this game, I imagine he's going to have to reemerge as a scorer. 17 points a game, they're, they're going to need some of that. Lance Collins checks into the ball game for River Rouge. You love the burgundy hose. A little bit of a, well, he did it during football season, and he wanted to keep it going because it brought him luck. And another foul underneath. He wore the white hose during the season and switch to the burgundy come tournament championship time. Hey, whatever works for you. <laughs> and I can understand being superstitious. Good shot by our camera crew. Dan Dyke will trigger it again. Watch Bigelow on the zip pattern, huh? An inadvertent horn. And they won't stop play. McCormick will walk it past the timeline and work the right side for Marshall, who leads by one. Lob underneath. Bigelow strong at the glass and down. Without Cage. Maybe they're trying to go underneath a little bit, Greg. Did you notice a little surge in the confidence inside for Marshall? Yeah, Cage is on the bench. And no one else is going to provide the intimidation inside that he will. You wonder when it's Duez Henderson time. There's a spin move. Baseline. A little long. Turner's follow-up good. Jamar Turner with a follow-up, his first bucket of the ball game to bring River Rouge within one. It's 10-9. Redskins lead the Panthers early. Lob pass, alley-oop. Nightlinger can't get it to fall, but he's fouled. Lance Collins got him on the push. Here's the lob over the top, and when you talk about the offensive execution, well, it's been very good in the half-court offense for Marshall. Again, they're taking their time. They're setting good screens. Each screen is set with the purpose to get a teammate open, and right now they're getting high-percentage shots. They're missing some of these little chippies that they may miss, that they may uh, uh, regret later on, but at least they're getting the high-percentage opportunities. Andy Neidlinger, the 6'7 senior, eyes it, sends it. And it rims out. He added 20 pounds in the offseason. Thanks a lot because of this guy, Chuck Middleton, the strength and conditioning coach, who has a very unique way of teaching these guys on how to build up strength, plyometrics, and agility. A lot of these guys credit their improvement to him. Nothing good there from Neidlinger on the free throws, though. It's still 10-9. Collins, long J, and it's down. Right. Collins that time. He had his, he wanted to get the ball into the post, but that was cut off, and they left him unguarded, so he smartly took his time and knocked down the shot. That'll open it up inside eventually for Dwayne Henderson. By the way, Cage is back into the ball game, as if you didn't know on the attempted block there. But Bigelow still went right at him. Give Marshall credit, Greg. They are still going inside to their big men. Neidlinger, Van Dyke, and Bigelow. Well, the thing about it, you talk about strong guys. You talk about guys with the football mentality. They get inside. They're looking for some contact. And there's your contact right there. And the foul goes against Charles Cage. And Cage has to be very careful. If he gets in foul trouble, that will hurt Rouge, especially on the defensive end. Bigelow makes good on the first freebie. This is a guy who runs cross country and track in the offseason. 
a second team all-conference selection in cross country and loves to scuba dive of all things. Also loves the fact that he just converted two of two to draw even at 12 with a buck 10 left to go in the first quarter. Collins hit from there before. Now wants to feed it into Cage. Swings it back out to Collins. Dribble drive. Pops from 14 and drills it. All right, Collins. Very comfortable and confident in his shooting ability from the right side. Nothing wrong with those decisions. The confidence is there. You like this guy. He loves to have fun on the court. Yeah, and he had patience that time. Notice he got it inside, moved to an open spot on the floor, got it back, took a dribble, and then knocked the shot down. Van Dyke off the plexi and over Cage and down to draw even at 14 with 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Van Dyke. You talk about leadership, he's shown quite a bit in this first half. His team has not shown any signs of being rattled. Has already scored more than he did the other night. Cage, turnaround, lean in, jumper, no. Rebound Marshall, they can play for the final shot. McCormick controls. Tries to get by Collins. Searles in the lane, the leaner, no. Long rebound, and that should do it. 14-14. No one can get the upper hand after eight minutes of action. Marshall and River Rouge, the Class B State Finals from the Breslin on Fox Sports Detroit. Red Wings continue their push for top seed in the Western Conference. They take on Dominic Hasek and the Buffalo Sabres. 7 o'clock tomorrow at the JLA. Ken Daniels, Mickey Redman with a play-by-play. -play. It starts with a pregame show at 6.30 here on Fox Sports Detroit. Collins was able to get a couple of nice jumpers to fall. Here being played very softly defensively. So he hoists with confidence, knocks it down. And then once again, Lance Collins. After getting the ball inside the cage, Cage has nothing. He gets it back outside to Collins, who shows that he can also hit it off the dribble. I just love the way this kid plays basketball because he has so much fun when he's out there, and it's so obvious. He knocks down 37% from the field, two for two tonight. Nothing wrong with that. We're even at 14. Wes Henderson, there you go. The first bucket for the All-Stater. And really the first time that he's shown any aggressiveness with the basketball. That time caught it, had it in his mind. He was going to score, took it strong to the hoop, exploded into the shot, and knocked it down. Greg, do you think that's a case where he's just trying to get his other teammates involved early on? It, it may be a situation where he doesn't want to get involved in, into taking bad shots but and to get into a rhythm himself. And I think having that shot go down has to swell his confidence just a little bit. Van Dyke with a bad shot. Evans tries to counter with a bucket, and it goes long. And Marshall will come back the other way. Down by two. Seven bench points, River Roots. But they're a deep team anyway. Yeah. Marshall's starters are going to play a lot in this ballgame. Searles makes contact, forces it up, didn't get the call. Charles Cage is... Uh, at times, looks like a man amongst boys, doesn't he? He really does. And you know, when you go back to the bench points you saw, Rouge, River Rouge, that is, with his decided advantage thus far, if the pace of this game is quick, and if it's up and down, you talk about the starters for Marshall playing long minutes, fatigue could become a factor in the fourth quarter. Right now, it's not an issue. It's a good point. Gene Evans checks out, and Brent Darby is fresh for River Rouge. Duez Henderson will toe the stripe for two, his club on top by two. Henderson, as Greg told you, will play for Tom Davis and the Iowa Hawkeyes in the Big Ten Conference next season. I asked him, you know, why go to Iowa? And he says, you know what? That's all they got there is college basketball. And when you see Carver Hawkeye Arena, and you know this, Greg, because you played there, it is absolutely crazy there. He doesn't mind going out in cornfields. Well, Iowa, Every year, they've got a tough team. They play the same style of basketball, quick, fast. They get it up and down the floor. They pressure, and that's the type of basketball they play here at River Root. So he should fit in very good there. They need some replacements for McCaws, Lynn, and Koch for Dr. Tom Davis. And Ryan Bowen. Yeah, good player. Yeah. McCormick underneath, Neidlinger. Thought he was going to take the turnaround jumper. Now he's deep in the lane. Cage is all over him. The bucket is good, and he'll go to the stripe to try and convert the three. Boy, Cage got caught behind that time, and it's awfully difficult. I don't care how good of a shot blocker you are to block a shot from behind without fouling. Look at Neidlinger. He gets it. The pump fake gets Cage up off of his feet. And even if it's not a foul, 
it looks like a foul to the officials, and it's not unusual to see this call right there. Excellent job by Nightlinger. And you talked about it right at the offset. You don't want to get the foul trouble if you're River Rouge's big man, and that's unfortunately for Ben Pearson Company where Cage is. Darby's jumper is true. 20 to 16, River Rouge back on top by a couple of buckets. Marshall hanging around, but you would expect a team that is 26 and 0 to be there. Dotted line jumper in the lane is good for McCormick. Well, McCormick navigated his way right into the paint, and I like the pull up. He didn't try to take it all the way inside. Challenge Cage pulled up. I like to see more players do that. Turner loses the handle. Searles is there to take advantage. We talk about a student athlete, Doug Searles, 4.1 GPA. An A-plus student. Van Dyke off the glass. No, it came out. Oh, he's left wondering, what do I have to do to buy an early bucket underneath? 4.1, Matt? 4.1. A-pluses. Oh, I, my goodness. Okay. I was wondering how you do that. I told him I could get to a 4.1 if you took all three years of high school from me. <laughs> Wants to be an optometrist. Well on his way. He's seeing things pretty good. We saw a lot of Ryan Van Dyke passes this year. He was an All-State wide receiver. The lean in by Nidlinger again, and he gets Cage in foul trouble. Third personal yeah. foul, Greg. I'm a little surprised. You know, Charles Cage, as we talked about defensively, he has very good timing. He does not have to leave his feet. He can certainly wait until you leave your feet as the shooter. And maybe it's just the nerves, the uh, the, uh, the the emotion, and the, everything that goes along with playing in a state championship game that is getting the Charles Cage right now. Yeah, the adrenaline maybe is, is there and wants to do too much on the defensive end. Nidlinger, whatever the case, has done a nice job of setting up position in the lane and taking advantage. His free throw is good. Nidlinger has really good footwork inside and all of that has helped him to gain the advantage against Cage right now. If you want to be nitpicky, he could shoot better from the stripe. Now two of five. 20 to 20, Marshall and River Rouge are knotted up with 5.14 left to go in the first half. Little zone by Marshall. Now they're back to man-to-man. -man. Darby, stutter step move baseline, but a whistle on Searles who got him with a hand check. Darby's so quick. You really have to play off of him a little bit because you don't want to give up that drive. But if you do, he's very capable of knocking down the jump shot. So it's really a pick-your-poison type situation. We've seen it throughout the entire tournament, Greg. The community support from every team in this tournament has been outstanding. No shortage of people here tonight for the Panthers and the Redskins. A triple for Darby. And see, that time McCormick decided, I'm going to back off this guy a little bit. And Darby made him pay. First triple of the night for Brett, and he has five to give River Rouge a three-point bulge with 4.40 left to go in the first half. Van Dyke, good pass underneath. Sean Kelly's layup. No! Henderson with a one-handed board. Once again, a point-blank miss by Marshall. Those may come back to haunt you, especially if this game is close. Darby's feeling it. Oh, that one crawled out. Good job rebounding by Marshall. River Rouge really has not been a huge factor on the offensive glass thus far. Van Dyke's a lot. There's a push-off, I believe, underneath. An offensive foul on Nidlinger. You like one-handed rebounds? Check out Duez Henderson right there. Snatches that one, cuffs it. Tells with a guy everybody hanging that's on his mind. With a guy hanging on his oh, wrist. Yeah. Henderson's also improved his strength this year. He's always been a big youngster. Big, strong kid for a high schooler. Here's another triple. This one is short. I wonder about the so shot selection there by Alex Lyles. River Rouge leads by three. Van Dyke will set up the offense. Now John Thompson and McCormick. McCormick and Darby has been a good matchup so far this evening. Thompson with Evans on him. River Rouge is man-to-man. -man. 
They are the 24th best team in the country, according to the USA Today. Neidlinger and Marshall's giving them everything they can handle, and that's why Neidlinger is huge. He has 10 to lead all scores. I like the fact that they're working the ball inside to him. They've raised a solid source of offense, and they're giving Neidlinger a chance to work himself free. Darby's answer is short. And Thompson watches it dribble out of bounds. 3-0-1 left to go in the first half. This is a dandy. 23-22. River Rouge has the one point upper hand. We're back with more from the Breslin Center on Fox Sports Detroit. Our state championship tournament flashback takes you back to 1977. Urban Magic Johnson, Lansing Everett Sr. Missing early on there, or late I should say, but a putback gives him a two-point lead with three seconds left. Then Kevin Smith, another former Spartan of Birmingham Brother Rice, launches for the tie. Yes, but in overtime, Urban takes over and everything comes up magic for Lansing Everett. You know that guy? Very well. <laughs> Quite well. Number 33 will never be worn again by a Spartan, nor should it be. Nor will number 32. The man to my right took care of that. Fond memories, huh? It's good stuff. That was good stuff. Good times. And you know what? That black and white footage, I had a color television <laughs> in 1977. So. Where's the color film? <laughs> boy, oh boy. Still good stuff, isn't it? 23-22. Van Dyke's strong but blocked. Marshall retains possession. Van Dyke looks like a walk to me. I believe it. Picked up his dribble a little early and good defense. That trip down by the Panthers. A block and a stop. Good job by River Rouge. And that time they trusted their defense. And in trusting your defense, sometimes it means playing 30 seconds, maybe a minute of defense if necessary, but you try not to break down, you try not to give a lane to the basket, and you try not to commit a foul to bail someone out. Rache Lee with a big stop there, the half-brother of Charles Cage, and Gene Evans knocks down the three-pointer to give River Rouge a four-point lead. That's Evans' third field goal of the half. McCormick all the way to the hole, no, and they're tied Neidlinger over the back of Henderson. Second foul on Neidlinger. Now, Greg, we talked about the physical play that Marshall and River Rouge can throw at you. Marshall, very physical in the semifinal win over Petoskey the other night. It can, you're, we're gonna see some elbows here before you're gonna, the night's You're out. gonna see some elbows, you're gonna see some blood, perhaps. You're gonna see some lumps. But when you talk about foul trouble, Neidlinger has two fouls now. We talked about them not being nearly as deep. Here's an elbow right this. Boom, right there in the face. And Lantos goes down. But he played tough defense and got his team the, the ball. And there's the blood we talked about. He might have drawn a little blood. You better believe it. Marshall can ill afford foul trouble. Cage is already in foul trouble, but you see how deep Rouge is. They really have not been that effective. They got a six-point lead right now. Lee's first bucket of the ball game gives them a six-point lead now. So Ben Pierce's bench has been huge so far in this first half. He has gotten some quality minutes from these guys. McCormick. Van Dyke slicing in the lane, off the glass, no. Bigelow with a rebound, and Marshall's got another shot at it. McCormick picks up the dribble early. Van Dyke underneath for Bigelow, and another great defensive play by Dwayne Henderson. Say what you want about River Rouge's offense this year that has gotten them to a number one ranking, but it's their defense that has given them this lead so far. Lee underneath her. Yes. Excellent pass there, time by Henderson. Unselfishness. And defense is keying all of this good activity right now for River Rouge. 20-second timeout for Marshall. Before they can let it slip away, they're down by eight. With Ben Pierce. And the Panthers want to talk about, I'm sure he's pleased right now, Greg. Just 1.15 left to go in this first half, and uh, River Rouge has gone on a little bit of a spurt here, and they're starting to feel their oats, if you will. Matt, what we're seeing, we're seeing better concentration on defense. With Cage on the bench, you know you don't have that backup behind you to help you out if your man gets by. So 
River Rouge's perimeter defense has improved significantly. Everybody's taking it upon themselves to guard their man, keep their man in front, and it's really helping them put some distance between themselves and Marshall. Another turnover by McCormick. Seems like there's a wet spot on that side of the floor. River Rouge's bench, we told you how huge it is. An 11-0 edge off the reserves from the Panthers. And Dewez Henderson with a follow-up yes to give him the largest bulge of the ball game. It's a 10-point lead. I'll tell you what, with Cage on the bench, Dewez Henderson has taken over inside on both ends. The paint is his. I like River Rouge's defense. They have really stepped it up and started to trap more and much more active. Their arms are spread out, they're up high, and they're causing havoc for Marshall. And so much of it is happening right there with the basketball. Grant Darby, very good on the offensive end, but you see he's committed to the defensive concept as well. And for the first time here this evening, Marshall has started to panic just a little bit. Another offensive foul, Ryan Van Dyke. Now, Neidlinger is on the bench. Searles is on the bench as well. And Marshall has lost a little bit without their big guy. Let's see if River Rouge plays for the final shot here. They lead 32-22. We approach the 22nd mark of the first half. Wow, they're on their feet. This place is rocking at the Breslin Center. One side trying to outdo the other. Now they'll double team Darby. Evans had a look. He's got five seconds. Lee back to Evans. Nice play back to Lee. Slams it home. Unbelievable. And that was the side. best play of the day. The patience, knowing the shot clock, the game clock, making all the extra passes. They made three extra passes that time. As patience, as poise, as excellent coaching there. Rashe Lee averages just three points a game. He has six. This one with a little exclamation point to round out the first half. River wow. Rouge leads it 34-22. The Class B State Championship the Panthers way here early. John Keating, what do you have for us? All right, Matt, Ben Pierce anxious to get into the locker room with his kids. Nice run at the end of the second quarter, and you've got some breathing room now over Marshall. It's not much. Game's not over with yet. When they brought in that three-point line, that changed the whole facet of basketball. Are you concerned about your interior play with Charles Cage in foul trouble? They've been able to get inside. They're just not getting those shots to fall inside on you. Well, we're doing a lot of uh, sagging from the weak side. So they're having a lot of trouble trying to get open shots. They're getting them up there. They're just not falling. But they're working hard the first half to get those shots. We got three guys that are 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, too. So once Charles goes down, we just bring another one in. All right, Ben, good luck the second half. Ben Pierce, the head coach of River Rouge. Let's go to Matt Shepard. John, don't kid yourself. Ben Pierce loves the fact that his Panthers closed out that first 16 minutes on a 9-0 surge. They lead it 34-22. We're back with more on Fox Sports Detroit from the Breslin Center after this. I know we've only played 16 minutes, but if you're River Rouge and you're Ben Pierce, you can't help but utter the words of Austin Powers. Yeah, baby. Welcome back to the Breslin Center. Matt Shepard along with Greg Kelser. Very impressive way to close out that first half, wasn't it, Greg? It was a five-minute clinic on how to play defense, how to be patient on defense, and then how to work the ball and get high percentage shots on offense. I thought that River Rouge was maybe rushing things, being a little impatient early on, and give Marshall credit, they took advantage. But once they settled down, and they actually played better with Charles Cage on the bench, because I think every guy took it upon himself to do a better job defensively on his own man. Well, Marshall Thomas has given us great insight throughout the entire tournament. He now joins John Keating courtside to give us his thoughts. John? All right, Matt, sometimes coaches shorten their bench in championship games, but you think it's the length of River Rouge's bench that has been the difference in the first half. Most certainly. You know, when you've got your legs and your strength behind you, a lot of those easy shots would fall. I think that that took its toll on okay. Marshall in the latter stages of that first half. What does Marshall need to do in the second half to climb back into this? They got maybe just kind of a hope and a prayer because I don't know how wide their bench is. And River Rouge has shown that they've got a long bench. All right, Coach, thanks. Shep, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, John. 13-0. River Rouge outscores their, their reserves, I should say, outscores Marshall's reserves. That's why they have a 12-point lead at the Breslin Center at the half. We're back with more right after this. What the hell? River Rouge's last title was 1972 under Lofton Green. They are 12 points up on Marshall, trying to win their first title since 1944. We're at halftime 
of the Class B Championship game here at the Breslin Center. I'm John Keating. The wrestling community, not just here in Michigan, but around the world, was saddened by the tragic death of U of M wrestler Jeff Reese a few months ago. Reese died while trying to shed weight. And the State High School Activities Association is on the absolute leading edge of educating its athletes about the importance of nutrition. And this year, scholarships were awarded to the schools which excelled at that. It is their moment of truth. In fact, for some wrestlers, it may be the only competition they feel. The battle is with themselves to make weight. Never was there a sport that was more of a numbers game. The worst thing is the guys that don't control it till like a day or two before, you know, they'll just, they don't watch what they eat. That is the biggest thing. They just go crazy on the fats. And it's hard cutting, it's hard cutting the day before. So it's the worst thing. Yeah, but that has been the standard procedure for years. Wrestlers literally set out the process of making weight and then in high school parlance, pig out, which is perhaps the worst thing that a body can endure. I saw a lot of tragedy happening. happening. We know um, that physically you can't do that to your body and that your body's going to retaliate at some point, and I didn't want to see that happen. Um, so that's what made me so strong in this program. Well, not many high school teams have ever had their own nutritionist, but this year the Michigan High School Activities Association mandated that wrestling programs explore the eating habits of their student athletes. Lincoln Park High School has been singled out for a merit award. They were lucky enough to have a nutrition teacher on staff who quickly became a fixture within the wrestling team. I sat down with them and explained some of the physiology of how your muscles use nutrition, you know, and uh, what they need to do t for that high energy that they needed. Um, when we did some individual nutrition counseling with the, with the individuals who had problems, and they have to see you there as part of it. Um, I was at their wrestling meets. Um, I was at their invitationals. I brought food for them that was good for them that, that would be low in fat and high in protein. and. They got to the point that by the end of the season, they were asking me, okay, what should I eat? And the parents, too, were asking me, you know, what should I bring? Um, and I think that the more we do this, the longer the program is in operation, that the better they'll get. One of the surprises in the dietary regimen for the guys was the realization as to how much they could eat and still maintain their weight. It is the ideal approach to their sport, avoiding the roller coaster of gain and loss and trying to hover around their competitive weight for their body type. And beyond the weight maintenance, the new directive improved performance. Funny what can happen when you're not rolling around with cheeseburgers in your system. Our conditioning as a whole has improved because of the nutritional program. These kids aren't starving and then chowing and they can't move because they can't breathe. Uh, so the conditioning has improved and I think the discipline because of the nutritional program has carried into their wrestling. Their wrestling has improved because of it. For their creative approach to nutrition, Lincoln Park High School receives a $2,000 grant from primary sponsor, the United Dairy Industry of Michigan. And for senior Chris Kaler, who has likely wrestled his last match, these are lessons which will last a lifetime. People weren't as lethargic, you know, they moved a lot better, they had a lot more energy, and they lasted longer through the day. Yeah, congratulations to all the award winners, and that is, after all, what high school is for, teaching lessons that will last a lifetime. 34-22, River Rouge leads Marshall here in the State Class B Championship game at the Breslin Center. We're down to our final 16 minutes of basketball, and we'll end for the third quarter when we come back. The Panthers of River Rouge are 16 minutes away from their 13th state title. They lead the Redskins of Marshall 34-22. How'd they get there, Brett? Well, again, in that second quarter, late, River Rouge started playing much better offense. You're going to have Brent Darby coming off a screen by DeWes Henderson. Now, when he comes off this screen, watch him with the basketball. And look how loosely he's being played right here by McCormick. That's McCormick. Look at the distance between the guys. McCormick doesn't want to get beat up. So Darby dances, dances, and then decides, hey, I'll knock this three down. You're not going to play up on me? Take that. 
Now here's the plate I thought was sensational going down to the end of the quarter. You got the basketball being handled right here. That's Evans. Actually Henderson gives it up, gets it back, and then making his move down the lane is Lee. Look how wide it is open right there. They knew the clock. They had all the poison patience of a veteran basketball team, a championship team, and they showed it on that one sequence. Rajay Lee played three minutes the other night, didn't score at all. Tonight, three minutes, six points. They lead 34-22. We're back with more at the Breslin Center, the Class B State Finals, and the final half of the season right after this. River Rouge leads it by a dozen, 34-22 at halftime with the Redskins of Marshall. You saw John Keating's halftime piece, the Sports Nutrition Award. Those folks commemorated here at halftime, the Breslin Center during this Class B State Finals. Our first half statistics, what jumps out at you, Greg Kelser? This 50% shooting by River Rouge, the 39% shooting, but it was 3 of 10 shooting that led to that in the second quarter for Marshall. And then the bench points. Mm. I don't care if you got a deep bench or not. That, that's a huge factor right there. No question. Marshall shooting 55% on the year. They shot 57% in the win over Petoskey the other night. They also held Petoskey to just 22%. But tonight, that has not been the case for the Panthers. You see the leading scores. Nidlinger leads everyone with 10. Evans leads the Panthers with 8. But the big points coming via Lee, who had six off the bench in just three minutes of play. Now, Ben Pierce will start Jamar Turner and Rashe Lee here in the second half. And Charles Cage starts the second half on the bench. Perhaps for two reasons. First of all, you don't want to have Cage go in and pick up that fourth one. You may need him down the stretch. The other reason, they played much better when Cage was out of the game. It was the 9-0 run that got Rouge there. 12-point lead, and all of that occurred with Charles Cage on the bench. Marshall will open up with a big lineup. Sean Kelly is out there instead of Doug Searle. So really a one-guard lineup for Marshall. Good feed, entry pass by Van Dyke. Neidlinger hammered by Lee. But as Greg Kelser has pointed out throughout the broadcast, the Panthers have a lot of depth and an awful lot of fouls to bang with Marshall's big fella. They certainly do, but again, as he did much of the first quarter, Neidlinger, a big target down in the paint area. So you get him the basketball, one thing he can do if he doesn't score, he'll draw some fouls. It's all keyed on the entry pass, though, isn't it, Greg? Oh, absolutely, and that was a superb entry pass. They threw it to the hand that he showed. He was using his... One arm to hold off the defender, showing big with the left hand, and that's where they threw the basketball. Neidlinger makes good on the front end. The all-conference soccer midfielder is short on the second, but he brings his Marshall ball club within 11, and then a turnover by the River Rouge Panthers in the backcourt. It's a break for Marshall, because if you're Marshall, you, you want to try and get off the offensive, offensive snide right away. You don't want to allow Rouge to continue what they had started to develop late in that second quarter they'll put this game away and you will not come back against them you know this Marshall ball club has been pointing to this game ever since they were freshmen they went 20 and 0 as freshmen and knew someday they would play for a title game this is their chance McCormick's long-range jumper is over the backboard and River Rouge will head back the other way McCormick shot that hurriedly didn't take his time the defense closed, he rushed it up there, had no, no rotation on the basketball. It hit the rim one time and bounced up high and over the backboard. River Rouge looking to add Marshall to a very impressive win list. They have beaten the Class C champion DePore's Ball Club, Belleville twice, Turner shot partially blocked and held on to by Neidlinger. Zone defense superb that time by Marshall. Here's Van Dyke up the right side, one on two, he doesn't have the numbers. McCormick to Kelly underneath, Neidlinger again. Off the glass and down. Hey, this guy knows how to deal down low. Just get him the basketball. He and that soccer team lost in the state finals a year ago. As you know, Marshall State football team lost in the finals this year. So there is some incentive for this ball club to try and atone for those two missed opportunities. They get there, but they can't close the deal. And this is yet one, uh, one more opportunity. The football team got it done last year, but just not this year. Lee underneath, and he's mobbed by three Redskins. We talked about 
River Rouge and the success of this program. Success, success, success this year as well. And a lot of it because of these plays. The excellent penetration that time by Evans. Gets it in tight and, you know, Lee has done a nice job too. Filling in. For his half-brother, Charles Cage. As I said, they've beaten the Class E champion, DePores. They beat him by 17. They beat Detroit Finney, who was a Class A semifinalist by 10. Belleville, who just lost in the Class A finals twice. Romulus twice. And, of course, the defending champion, Country Day Yellow Jackets. Well, the loss to Romulus was early in the season, third game of the year, and that happened at River Roost. But more of a wake-up call. Probably a necessary thing to happen. And from that point, they never missed a beat. Lee converts one of the two to give River Rouge a 10-point lead. Nidlinger underneath. Mobbed, and it's a whistle on the baseline. Just out of bounds off the Panthers. Charles Cage wondering how he got in foul trouble early, but hoping that his teammates can get the job done without him. Good no call by the referee there, and the ball goes off Kelly. Darby and the Panthers will inbound. Darby, a stocky guard, dribbles the ball high. Some folks don't like that this kid's a great athlete. Great baseball player, but gave it up in the eighth grade to concentrate on his basketball skills. How about that crossover dribble? Finds Henderson, and Henderson will help run the Panthers' offense. Trying to figure out how to attack the zone pressure, which is really coming out on the floor and doing a nice job there. Marshall, the zone seems to be the best defense for them right now because they're able to rotate and cover the ball no matter how quickly River Rouge moves the basketball. McCormick with good defensive help. Panthers retain possession, up by 10 at 5.35, left to go in the third. Long range, Jay Evans doesn't fall. Follow up by Henderson, he's fouled. He stole it away from Nidlinger, and Nidlinger is complaining a little bit, thought he was fouled underneath. Marshall foul, Andrew Nidlinger. His third, second team foul. Here's the shot by Evans. It goes up. He's unguarded there, but he rims it. And then Nightlinger has inside position, but he can't clamp it, so it comes off there to Henderson, and he goes up and picks up the foul. Dwez Henderson moved to River Rouge in the 10th grade. Really didn't have a, an appreciation for the history of this basketball program, but his uncle, William Brown, was part of it all his life and made sure that Henderson learned about Panther pride. Lane violation, that hurts to a certain extent, and Marshall will try and capitalize the other way. McCormick's bounce pass, no one was home. We approach the five-minute mark of the third quarter. River Rouge leads by 11. It's 36-25 over Marshall. A relatively low-scoring ball game so far. Evans and Darby playing catch, trying to operate and see which offense works against that zone. Van Dyke comes out. Well, you see the athleticism of Henderson on a simple bullet pass was just a little high but he gathered it in nicely and found the open man Darby's leaning jumper dotted line good yeah that's good patience and when you got a good ball handler a guy that can create for himself off the dribble that becomes a very valuable asset Darby clearly able to use his quickness his ball handling ability to get in for the short jumper McCormick to Van Dyke he takes it in amongst the trees and they will call a foul on Turner a moment ago, you had a lane violation when DeWes Henderson was trying to shoot a free throw. Now, what happens is you got Lee. He's over here talking to someone on the bench, and then he's going to try and make his move right into that free throw spot, and uh -uh, you can't do that. Once they hand the ball to the shooter, everything freezes. Ryan Van Dyke's free throw freezes on the front rim and it falls short. 
a 78% free throw shooter trying to bring his team within 12, and he does. Panthers very content with this lineup right now, Greg, that has given them a lot of hustle and, and the defensive intensity that they need. Searles, by the way, is back into the ball game, And Kelly is out for Marshall. A lot of pressure on the ball from the Redskins. Henderson, baseline, fouled by Neidlinger. No, they call it travel. Yeah, I think that was a good call, too. I think that was the, uh, the absolute right call. Timeout on the floor. River Rouge leads 38-26. 3.49 left to go in the third quarter at the Breslin Center for the Class B State Finals on Fox Sports Detroit. Boy, Pistons lost a close one last night at Cleveland's Gundarina. They try to atone Wednesday night at the Palace of Auburn Hills. Fred McLeod, Greg Kilser bring you the play-by-play. -play. It starts at 7.30. But the pregame show kicks things off at 7 o'clock here on Fox Sports Detroit. John Keating is everywhere in the Breslin Center. John, you're not afraid of heights, are you? No, we're not too high up here, but it's, it's rather fascinating. They've set up a screen print press to print championship T-shirts. Kyle Cornish is with the Screen Express. And how do you feel about your chances right now of printing up River Rouge championship T-shirts with them up by 12? Well, we've got like a 12-point lead late in the third quarter. Uh, hopefully it'll, it'll stay that way so we can get a few shirts ahead before the people get out to the table after the game. So the goal is to wait as long as possible and then sell everything you make. That's, that's the goal, yes. <laughs> we shall see. Matt, back to you. John, interesting stuff. Of course, you don't need an extra large just yet, but a few more lunch meals here at the Breslin Center and you may. 38-26. We saw you take an extra. River Rouge leads it by 12. Ryan Van Dyke and the Redskins have to make their move sometime soon because the Panthers are really starting to tighten it up on the defensive end. Bigelow in the lane. Back to Van Dyke. Open for three. It's short. Henderson rips down the board. Wow. Boy, and if he could get it out quickly, they would have had numbers. Boy, good hustle by Marshall. They've got numbers. Here's Van Dyke. Easy lane. The inability of the Wes Henderson to extricate himself from all the pressure in the paint area, forced the turnover, and then Marshall had numbers going the other way. They hung in there. Give them credit. Just their fourth point off a River Rouge turnover. The Panthers have scored 15 off Marshall cough up so far. And the big fella Cage is back in for Ben Pierce's ball club, replacing his, his half-brother Lee. And we'll see what kind of uh, job he can get done now for a while. Trying to set a screen on Searles and doing a pretty good job of it. Underneath, Henderson, no. That was Turner, and he was fouled. Again, Darby just able to break the defense down. Can get penetration pretty much whenever he wants to and makes good decisions off that penetration. Remember the last time when he got into the lane, Darby was able to pull up and get the shot for himself. This time goes inside, draws three defenders, kicks it down low to Turner, who was able to draw the foul. Jamar Turner makes good on the front end, 6'7", senior. This is a kid. Now, you, you think of basketball players, you figure a lot of other different kind of athletics, but this is a kid who loves to fish. He'll go anywhere there's water to fish for carp, pike, salmon. He'll go fly fishing. He's won a lot of tournaments and started at the age of three, but he converts one of two. Van Dyke to Neidlinger. Why not? Take it strong at Cage. He's got foul trouble, but Neidlinger couldn't convert. Out come the Panthers. The break. The slam. See, that's what happens. Once again, Marshall tried to dislodge the ball from the rebounder, and no one got back. If you can break that pressure, you're going to have numbers. Neidlinger strong at Cage off the glass and down. And because of the foul trouble, Charles couldn't really be as aggressive as he'd like to be. You know, Cage hasn't been a factor in this game. And I think it's just a matter of time before he picks up his four. Because he's out there playing tentative, trying not to pick up the foul. And Marshall is repeatedly going inside the Neidlinger. Look at the floater by Darby. You know, that is the thing that makes River Rouge so difficult to play against. Anybody steps up on any given night and gets the job done. Another turnover. Darby, long pass for Turner. He's not going to be able to run that down. That's a situation where you might have wanted to hold it up. Yeah. What he really did, he ran down three or four spectators seated along the, and cheerleaders seated along the baseline. 
Sometimes you don't mind that. Maybe sometimes he does that on purpose. <laughs> Flies right in to some of his friends that uh, maybe he has an English class or something. 43-30. River Rouge on top by 13 with just 132 left to go in this third quarter. Rache Lee is back into the ball game for Jamar Turner. Just to be close to you. They covered up just fine. They're experienced enough to know when to get out of the way, especially of a big fella. Van Dyke had it stripped from behind by Darby. Loose ball on the floor. And they'll call a jump ball with a possession arrow in favor of the Panthers. Ben Pierce and Coach Cottons of Marshall. Cottons just been here a couple of years, says he's formed a real strong relationship with some of the other coaches in the Marshall system. Came from up north, where he was a coach at Everett High School for seven years. Advanced to the regionals a couple times, but has never been in this type of situation. Searle's attempt for the steal for not. Darby schools him on the up and under. The bucket won't count, but he'll toe the stripe, I believe. That's not fair. That is not fair. I mean, there's a high school guy, a junior, with some serious college moves. <laughs> the ball handling, the pump fakes. And though it doesn't count, he still was able to nail the jumper. They he'll, say he was not in the act of shooting, so they will trigger the inbound. Hey, he'll be back. Yes, he will. Thank That's goodness scary. they don't have, uh, you know, hardship in high school. We can go right out of high school <laughs> into college or something. He might be gone. Terrific Nothing play. hard for Dwez Henderson, who laid it off the plexi nicely, and they're up by 13 of the Panthers with under a minute to go. Thompson is in for Marshall. Searles is out. Van Dyke for three. His outside game is not there. Neidlinger to a cutting Van Dyke who can't get it to fall, but he will tow the charity stripe for two, and he and Cage go at it a little bit. Hey, you know, elbows there. You know, Van Dyke has a bit of a a bit of a nasty side as a quarterback, and that doesn't surprise me at all. You know, we showed Dan Cottons a moment ago. You can tell that he's a good basketball coach because his team they they run good stuff. They got fundamentals and. And, and right now what's happening is they're, they're just being, there's too many weapons on the Rouge side for them to deal with. But you can tell by the way his team executed in that first quarter, uh, this is a well-coached basketball team. We talked about the physical play. It got uh, physical this trip down with Van Dyke and Cage. After that play, Van Dyke makes both. 45-30. What you have out here too, are two very smart basketball teams, but one, in Rouge right now, River Rouge, just so much more experience. You know, they've been to this point uh, and, and really set this championship attainment as a goal of theirs. Is anything short of that is a disappointing would have season. been a very disappointing well, season. Well, the, their quickness is evident as well. Oh, right? yeah. Darby dribbling it out, looking for the final shot. Ben Pierce says, come on, get it going. Get the offense in gear now at 10 seconds. Another up and under. Oh, he traveled. <laughs> he slid the foot. There. He slid his, his left foot. Not the right foot that time, as he was trying to slide up under the defense. Ben Pierce wanted them to get into that offense a little bit quicker than that. Van Dyke, long bomb, picked off by Darby. I don't agree with that play. He'll launch from half court. Oh, it would have been good if it went, but it was just rimming out. 45-32. Is eight minutes away from a big time celebration in East Lansing. We hope you can join us for whoever is crowned Class B champion. Right now, the Panthers have the 13 point lead. We go to break from the Breslin Center. We're back with the final eight minutes after this on Fox Sports Detroit. Championship Saturday here at the Breslin Center on Fox Sports Detroit. Never in the history of this 82-year tournament has four Metro Detroit area teams come away with four state titles in the various classes. River Rouge is on their way to making a little history tonight, Greg. Yeah, well on their way. And congratulations, of course, to Southgate Aquinas. They get the 54-45 victory over Mio. And in Class C, St. Detroit, St. Martin, DePores, 58 
their sixth title. 65,000 have packed the Breslin Center over the weekend. Up six grand from a year ago. They do an outstanding job running this tournament year in and year out. The folks at the MHSAA and the folks at the Breslin Center in East Lansing. A lot of people helping out as volunteers, and we can't thank them enough for all their help from the crew here at Fox Sports Detroit. We start the final eight minutes. Marshall down by 13, and with the ball, nine lingers. Bunny wouldn't fall, but he'll tow it for two. There's your fourth foul on Charles Cage. Well, you said it. You expected it. Just a matter of time. See, the problem occurred when he was allowed to pick up that third foul in the first half. You know, because now he's out there trying to more or less stay out of the way. He has not been in his usual aggressive self on the defensive end, all in, a, all in, a, in an effort to stay out on the floor. And really, when you play that way, you're not of much use to your team. We talked about the champions from earlier today. Southgate Aquinas, their second. DePores, their sixth. And you and Fred McLeod had the game before this one. Detroit Central, what a special feeling for Central, their first ever title. So Detroit has represented themselves well, but all the schools have. They've been very professional, very cordial, and have played extremely hard. 45-34, River Rouge leads it by 11. And Cage will sit down. Turner and Lee are in the ball game for the Panthers. Turner's turnaround, doesn't rattle home, and he climbed over the back of Neidlinger. Yeah. Neidlinger's done a nice job setting himself inside the box. Neidlinger has been... The best player on the floor, obviously, in this game for Marshall. And what Turner did a moment ago, sort of predictable. How many times do you see a guy miss that little shorty and then try to go right back and get it over someone's back? Here's Kelly taking it strong at the plexi. It would fall. And Neidlinger, I believe, climbed over the, black, the uh, back of somebody else. So the foul goes back the other way. And he's in danger of getting into some foul trouble. Neidlinger has three. Check that, he has four now. Dare take him out at this point, Greg? Or? I, I think you leave him in because you're on the brink of getting blown out of this game. You're down 11, you don't have the basketball. You pretty much leave him out there on the floor and trust his judgment not to get, in, get himself eliminated from the game. Oh, and he just, he, just he just got eliminated He just pushed game. Henderson. Oh, obvious call, too. Yep. Second offensive foul from Neidlinger, his fifth of the ball game, and he will try retire, rather. 17 points, a team-high 17, a game-high 17. Also had eight caroms, three on the offensive end. Tough way to end. Yeah, it is. And you know what? Really tough because he was just being physical in the post trying to get the basketball. But when he extended that arm right there, mm -hmm. And Dewes Henderson played it off real nicely, falling to the floor, helping the official call it. Now with Neidlinger out, they pretty much lose whatever interior presence they had. Well, somebody's going to have to step up, whether it be Kelly, Van Dyke. They bring in Bigelow, who had a big game the other night against Petoskey. Maybe he can get some damage done inside, but whatever they do, they better make it quick because we're approaching six and a half left to go on the fourth. And River Rouge is very comfy with that 11-point cushion. McCormick staring at that buckle of Darby. Henderson, feet pass, knocked away by Bigelow. Good defense. But now Marshall's got to start putting the ball in the hoop. Yeah. Thompson on the drive, the left-handed leaner. Oh, he gets the kind roll. That gets it under 10. So psychologically, that's a benefit. Now, if you're Marshall, you're hoping for just one more stop. Don't gamble. Don't break down defensively. Try to force a tough shot and get a rebound. First bench point of the night for Marshall. River Rouge, the reserves from the Panthers have outscored him 17-2. Here's the tough shot. There's the rebound. Boy, the noise is deafening. Kelly on the fast break, lost it, and they'll say Lee stepped out of bounds. Every team, Greg Kelser, as you well know, makes a surge at some point in time. This might be the time for Marshall. A 20-second timeout. Ben Pierce will talk things over with his Panthers. Dan Cottons will do the same with his Redskins. 
Well, right now the Redskins are getting all the help that their fans can muster. I mean, they're up, they're on their feet, they're into this game. They've got to come out and try. And they'll really erupt if the Redskins can score a basket on this possession. Let's go inside the River Rouge huddle. Ben Pierce has some instruction for his Panthers. Let's go! Stop him right here! Positive influence from Ben Pierce, and he learned that a long time ago when he played for a very special coach back in 1976. Of course, we're talking about Lofton Green. Who's here tonight? He and his wife. McCormick baseline. His grandfather is here. His grandfather who played on the only Marshall Championship team back in 1944. Unfortunately, the turnover for Marshall. Every possession is sacred for the Redskins. You said it. 14 cough-ups for Marshall so far here in this ballgame. You don't want to foul, you don't need to foul. Brandon Van Dyke with a steal. Thought about that triple. Now he'll take it and drill it. Oh. Now they got River Rouge on its heels. The Panthers are starting to second guess themselves. What heaven flow. Watch out for Darby. He might quiet this crowd. Offensive foul. They have become rattled. No mistaking that. Marshall has become fired up. Good defense. It's amazing. In the first half, River Rouge went on a surge with Cage on the bench. Now, Neidlinger out of the game via the foul route. And Marshall's playing great. Oh, McCormick's three. If that had gone, this place, the roof would have been blown right off. But River Rouge, they've got numbers, too. Four on two, and Darby will wisely hold up. Darby's dribbling an awful lot. He's in the paint. Lost it again. And tipped off off Kelly and out of bounds. Boy, I'll tell you what, River Rouge got a break there. Yeah, they did. Darby, I think Darby turned down a couple of good shots favoring the dribble. Lee checks out and Cage is in. So we'll see if Ben Pierce tries to go underneath. And you see Cage establish position on Kelly immediately in that low block area. He's in the second slot in the barn on the right side. Now Bigelow comes out to challenge him. No look pass by Darby is stolen by Bigelow. All right, it's time for Brent Darby to get the basketball up. He's putting just a little bit too much. Thompson's left, he doesn't fall. Well, you're right, Greg. Marshall has had the opportunities. The shots are there. They just can't get it down the hole. Yeah, Brent Darby, they're sending two men out after him. Obviously, someone's got to be open. He's got to find it and get the basketball up. They are within six, but Marshall is staring at a Panther team that has been here before. They won it in 96. They were disappointed in losing to eventual champion Borges last year and made a pledge. Nothing is acceptable but a state championship in 97-98. No count on... You gotta close the distance within six feet if you wanna get a five second count. Evans two timed in the corner. Somebody got him with an A. And I think it was John Thompson. The atmosphere of high school basketball in a state championship game is very difficult to manage. It is electric, especially when the communities of Marshall and River Rouge are as supportive as these two communities are. Marshall's gonna get a timeout because you know, they're, they're, ex uh, they're exerting a lot of energy on the defensive end, and they could probably use a little blow right now. Well, and when you are this emotional after each possession, each make, each defensive stand, that takes a little bit out of you as well. It does. And the thing is, the closer you get back into a game after being down a long way, you really have to be sound in your decision-making, and if you're fatigued, then that decision-making can suffer. So if they get a timeout right now, it wouldn't be uh, a bad idea. Gene Evans at the free throw line, the 6'1 senior. His first free throws of the night, the first one is true. This guy loves to dance. I asked him during warm-up, should you guys win this ball game tonight and finish 27-1, number one in the state? What kind of dance are you going to do? He says, I don't know, but all I know is I'm going to be dancing all night long. <laughs> Second one is good as well. No, lane violation. Wow. 
Second time it's happened to River Rouge tonight. We've seen it a number of times in the tournament so far. 46-39. The Redskins hanging around. Three and a half left to go in the ball game. We're back with more at the Breslin Center. Stay with us. Well, I love this time of year because baseball season is right around the corner. Three days from now, at season opener. The Tigers and Devil Rays in Tampa. Josh Lewin, Kirk Gibson, and Ernie Harwell bring it to you. Fox Sports, the Tigers pregame show, kicks things off at 4.30. John Keating's been part of that for years and years in Detroit. He now joins us up in the Breslin Center with a very special guest. John. All right, Matt, thanks. 54 years ago, Marshall won their last state championship. Bill Hammond played on that team. His grandson, Mike McDonald, plays on this team. How much fun are you having watching your grandson play tonight? Uh, it's wonderful, but I wish there were 10 points ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I sense comeback here in the Marshall uh, section. How are you guys feeling? Well, they're, they're excited, but uh, they don't give up. Marshall never gives up until the last whistle blow. Feeling in the uh, state championship game much like it was for you in 1944? Same thing, two points different. So you know how it is, my son. I hope my grandson Andy can do something. But who knows? Let's go back to the finish. There's Matt Shepard. Ryan Van Dyke sure did something. Hit that triple try, and Marshall is within four. A little different from 1944. We're in color now, folks. Excellent way to come out of a, a, a timeout. Get everybody on the same page. Get everybody a little bit rested. And now you talk about momentum. Marshall's on a 10-1 run in this quarter. This is where Dwez Henderson usually steps up along with Brent Darby. Searles out on Darby. There's the floater we were looking for. He missed it. Henderson's rebound stolen by Kelly. Excellent defense once again. You're forcing Darby into some very tough shots. Those runners, those leaners down the lane, those things are very hard to hit, especially as the game is winding down. Yeah, but he hit him in the first half, Greg. Van Dyke strong at the hole, and he's fouled as a cage. And you see, Ryan Van Dyke has to be very careful here. As competitive as this kid is, and you can't help but feel a little intensity when you're out there, he's got to watch the, uh, you know, the comeback shoves. I got to tell you, Marshall identified Charles Cage and said he is not going to be a factor in this game. Early, early, early in the ball Early game, and saying. off and late. When he was on the floor, they went after him. He is done with two points. Not a Charles Cage-like performance. A guy who, when the All-State selections are announced, we expect to be close to a unanimous selection after the season he had. Ryan Van Dyke is at the free throw line. The first one is short. Not enough leg. Well, the only saving grace from River Rouge with Cage on the bench. He really had not been a factor in this game anyway. So having him out should not be that much of a turn. Second one is down and Van Dyke has been huge in the scoring column. He leads everyone with 18. 11 sub 17 from the free throw line and you see how River Rouge has just one point in this fourth quarter. Darby puts an end to that. Darby's fearless. Yeah, he's not rattled. But at least that time he shot a shot that allowed him to go straight up as opposed to that, that leaning shot. Searles, good lay in off of Kelly and Kelly is fouled. Now Marshall is going to have to earn their points and this is what you were talking about before, Greg. Free throws are vital. Mm-hmm. The passing. There's the drop off inside. Good identification by Searles to read that defense. Sure. Kelly goes up strong with it, gets fouled. Now he's got to make two free throws. Marshall shooting just 65% from the free throw line. That is not like them. During the campaign, the regular season, well, actually, they're right around there. They shot 63%. Let's hear what Ben Pierce has to say. Don't get up there trying to block shot. Now, it's two minutes left. We up five. Nothing but layups. Nothing but layups. All right? Let's go now. One, two, three, family. Ready? One, two, three, family. I think what he's saying there, Greg, is let's watch our shot selection. Well, it looks like he's going to ask for ball handling from Darby and Evans. Get penetration if they can break any double team that comes out on the ball. Through that penetration, you get a drop off, maybe a high percentage layup. He doesn't want any jump shots. He wants them to use the clock and be real deliberate offensively. I give Marshall an awful lot of credit. They were down by a dozen at the break. 
They did not fold. Kelly's free throw runs out, but their free throw shooting, their poor free throw shooting, may haunt them by the end of this ball game. They have told the stripe 18 times and made now just 11. That hurt. Those two were critical because you had a chance to get it back to one possession. Searles on Darby. Darby in the lane. The floater is good. <laughs> yeah, Darby feels like he can score anytime he yeah, wants he to. He is clutch. 13 points tonight for the junior. And the lead is back up to seven. Searles in the lane off the flexi and down. Timeout, Redskin. They have brought it to within five with 139 left. Remember, Greg pointed out at the beginning of the broadcast the difference in rules. The clock does not stop on change of possession under two minutes. Let's go inside that Marshall huddle. So go back out, match up. Okay? You're on Darby, or are you? Okay? Listen, yeah. We don't want him to take it up the floor. Let's try to steal the inbound. Okay? You two take the big guys. All right? Ryan, you're guarding the inbounder. So that means you come off and deny Darby the ball with Dougie. Got it? If you got a foul, foul. If it's you, it's you. Okay? We still have three timeouts. So when we score, keep taking timeouts until I tell you not to. Yeah, try it right here. Dan Cotton's in his second year at the helm at Marshall, a master in education leadership, trying to be the leader for Marshall today. And you see both teams with three timeouts. Of course, Marshall, one of theirs is a 20. They don't want Darby to get the basketball. They know with his ball handling ability, he can create problems. So they're going to try and deny him the basketball on the inbound. How about the possession arrow in favor of River Rouge? So important when we reach under two minutes. Henderson will inbound, and Van Dyke at 6-6 will bother him. Darby does get the inbound pass, and Searles does what his coach instructed him to do. Foul. Henderson, Evans, Darby, Turner, and Lee are out there for the Panthers in crunch time. Searles, McCormick, Kelly, Bigelow, and Van Dyke for Marshall. Darby at the free throw line. And his first trip there today. But this guy, you hate to use cliches, but... Ice in the veins is maybe something that comes to mind as he makes the first. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be bothered out there one bit. In fact, he seems to be enjoying this. The fact that it's tighter, and it gives him a chance to demonstrate his clutch play. Bend at the knees, sends it, fills it. Ben Pierce, an interim head coach, has never won a state championship in the state of Michigan. He is about to do that today. Van Dyke's triple doesn't go. Bigelow's rebound. Back to Van Dyke. Little lean-in jumper. Forced it, and it wouldn't fall. Bigelow fights for the rebound. Loose ball on the floor, and Lee comes away with it. Good job of getting rid of it, and Searles handled him hard. Well, you're right, Greg. I think Marshall and Dan Cottons, if they had it to do over again, might have shot a few more free throws during the warm-ups. They needed to convert their freebies. And shooting 58% doesn't help your cause. And I harken back to the first quarter, early second quarter, when they missed several layups and short jumpers. We said those might come back to haunt the Redskins if this thing ended up being close. And certainly that's the case now. After the ball game, we will have the presentation of the championship trophy, the runner-up trophy, and the medals for all the players who played their hearts out here on the floor this afternoon. And John Keating will join us with a winning coach and a player or two as well. So keep it tuned here to Fox Sports Detroit for the postgame celebration. Rache Lee, the first free throw is out. And Henderson is there for the rebound. And we talked about big time players playing big time roles.
This is the final game for Henderson in a River Rouge uniform. He'll be back on this floor, however. Won't be so friendly when he gets here the next time. <laughs> well, no longer a kid. He and these Panthers became men this season. Fighting through adversity. Not letting anything derail them on their quest for a state title. Lamonte Stone, four years ago, was trying to build a type of dream in this program. And ben Pierce is helping him, watching it come to fruition. He wanted to be a state champion, and he wanted to be a top 25 in the country, and that's where they are. Looking to close out Marshall as we go under a minute to go. Bigelow to Kelly for three. Yes! 54-48. Darby loses it out of bounds. Hey, it's just a two-possession basketball game when you factor in the three-point shot. Marshall wants a timeout on the floor. The Redskins will not give up. They will not go away. They have an all-season long. They have never experienced a loss. Forty-one, fifty-one and a half seconds left to go. River Rouge on top, 54-48. Ben Pierce has learned a lot coming up through this River Rouge program. He had a great teacher and took over for a great coach. And he's learned an awful lot on what he's tried to pass on to his players. He's a man of structure, organization. Um, you know, the success of any high school, even collegiate program, is a feeder system. Uh, it was a well-developed feeder system. By the time I... Uh, I played for him or anyone else played for him by the time we were juniors, you know, you already knew everything you needed to know. You know how to block out, you know how to shoot left hand, right hand layups, you know how to dribble left hand, right hand, you knew the basic uh, concept of defense, so everything was laid out by the time you got to him. Ben Pierce, who led the 1984 girls state championship team, is trying to do it with the River Rouge Panthers. Matt, one thing I think needs to be said is that you know, you have to go back to Lamonte Stone, who started this dream. He took over a River Rouge program that was in the dumps four years ago <laughs> and won 14 games his first year, got it up to 22 the next year, then 23 the third year, and then this year was supposed to be the year. It's very unfortunate that he, along with his assistant coach and the other two players that were suspended, had to miss this opportunity. But, you know, give Ben Pierce a lot of credit. It's, not, it's very difficult to get players to respond as they have to an assistant coach. He's done a great job, but this is Lamonte Stone's basketball team and his dream coming to fruition. McCormick misses a dotted line jumper. Break away for Lee. Van Dyke is on his heels and tries to strip it from behind. Ben Pierce, the takeover was softened a little bit too because of primarily two players. Duez Henderson and Charles Cage as seniors, as co-captains. They gathered the troops and said, let's make this transition as easy as possible. Let's help the coach out and let's stay focused. And they've done just that. Yeah. And perhaps for those who aren't really up on the story, the suspensions were due to what the Michigan High School Athletic Association termed as undue influence by the coaching staff to a couple of players that transferred last season to the Rouge program. It was disputed, but I think that uh, Coach Stone decided, hey, the bigger picture is these guys completing their goal, what we started at the beginning of the season. So they called off the fight and decided to just rally and get this done. Not a bad strategy as Lee splits the pair. 55-48, River Rouge on top. Van Dyke for three, yes. They are within four. You gotta love the attitude Marshall presents on the court. They're Ryan doing, Van Dyke has been very big. They're doing everything they can to keep that zero in the loss column. I mean, they are playing like winners. They are going out like winners. This team was down 15 points a moment ago, uh, or earlier in this half, Marshall. Now trailed by only four, still with a chance. Van Dyke, three of eight from behind the big arc. A game high 21 points. 7 of 16 from the floor. You want leadership? You got it in number 33. Ryan, you start here. Go baseline through there. Give me the ball. Marshall with just one 22nd timeout. Dan Cotton's inside the huddle talking to his Redskins. Let's listen in. Ryan, you start here and end here. Look for him there, Matt. Trevor, they're not going to pay any attention to him. 
Trevor, you start here and go all the way through right there. Okay? Catch, if you have the three, nail it. Head fake, if they're on you, give it back to Andy and Andy will knock it down. You guys crash the damn boards. Okay? Rebounds, rebounds, rebounds. Right now, Marshall with 18 caroms to River Rouge's 25. They need a defensive stop more than anything else. They trail by four with 31.4 seconds left to go in this Class B state championship. What a ball game this has been. I think they got time to try for one steal. Do not end bounce pass, try to get a steal. If you don't, get the foul. River Rouge is out there with Lance Collins and a foul as soon as it's inbounded. Collins takes the hit. So Ben Pierce has his better free throw shooting team out there and of course his better ball handling. Absolutely. And Greg talked about the adversity that this River Rouge team has gone through. Lance Collins is a guy who's seen his minutes increase because of the suspended two players and he's handled it quite well. I like this whole ball call there. Yeah, well, a, another testament to their depth. Collins will shoot first one is short. So the biggest lead River Rouge can have after this possession would be five. That's still two possessions. That one is short. Oh, they did him a favor. Kelly with a rebound to McCormick. Marshall needs a good shot. Van Dyke for three. Yes! Van Dyke, big oh time. My. And he follows Darby on the inbound. Ryan Van Dyke has picked this Redskins team, put it on his shoulders and said, come with me and I'll lead you on a comeback. They are within one. They are not done yet, folks. And you know what? No matter what happens, even if Darby is able to knock down both free throws, it's still a one-possession game. The jumper again, back-to-back -back triples. Notice how he kept the feet behind the line. I, I thought he was certainly going to step over the line when he took the dribble. That's presence of mind. Look at this. Toes the line. You gotta love this guy's attitude. Just two points in the win over Petoskey. Folks, he attempted just five field goals. He made one. Tonight, Ryan Van Dyke is eight of 17 for two dozen points. And listen to the Marshall crowd. Darby's free throw is good. You know what has happened? There are a lot of people in this crowd that are just staying around to see a good game. They have now become Marshall fans because they've embraced this comeback effort. This is like a road game for Rouge now. Darby is clutch. Thing is now, will Rouge foul or will they let him get a three off? Timeout. Marshall wants a timeout. They got a 20. This will be a 20 second. We'll keep it here at the Breslin Center. 57-54, what do you look for, Greg? Here's the situation. Don't Neither team, me. Rouge certainly does not have a don't foul to give. But they can opt Rouge to try to foul three. before the shot. Don't try to get the stream. Put Marshall on the you line, they only get two. So they would have to try two. to make and then miss. All Rouge would have to do is get a rebound. Or they can opt to say, hey, you knock down a three, you knock down a three. We're not going to foul you, we're going to make you take a tough three. Let's listen in on Ben Pierce's hey, defensive strategy. We got this! We got Put your hands up. Come on, baby. One, two, three, family. Ready? One, two, three, family. Ben Pierce and the Panthers are getting a stiff test today. They have only lost once on the season. Marshall, down by 12, has come back with a vengeance. What a huge game by, oh. and, uh, by Van Dyke. Well, he is their, uh, you figure they're going to go to him. He is their best three-point field goal shooter, 44% on the season. Here's Thompson to McCormick. Darby's in his shorts. Van Dyke will force it. Oh, it's short. Long rebound, Darby. They will close it out. One second left. And Darby and the Panthers can feel it now. I'll oh, give Marshall all the credit in the world. We said this was going to be a great game. You said it might be one of the best of all time. And it certainly lived up to that. That shot was almost in by Van Dyke. Just a little bit short, but again, I think Marshall will go back and say, man, if we hit those free throws, yeah. we could have taken care of business. He had a good look, Greg. 
The dribble to free himself. I mean, got some good spacing right there. Shot it, hit the rim. I mean, it looked good from our angle. And Bigelow was stationed on the backside in case the miss was long. Thought he had pretty good possession, but Darby snuck, snuck in there and stole it away from him. 57 to 54. Oh. Well, the first 12 came in quick fashion. Took a little while to get that 13th, huh? Yeah. 26 years. <laughs> It'll be worth it for River Rouge. But the drought and the wait for Marshall fans will have to wait at least one more year. And these guys who were 20-0 as freshmen will appear to close their senior career at 26-1. And, and, of course, that's nothing to hang your head about either. You won't be able to tell it to these guys. You won't be able to tell it to Mike McCormick, who lost a disappointing state final in the soccer championships a year ago. You won't be able to tell it to Ryan Van Dyke, who lost a disappointing Class B state finals in football either. Okay, as you step to the line now, you're Brent Darby. You make one, you celebrate. You missed a second on purpose, do you not? Because there's no way you can get it and shoot it with one second left. Could do that, but it won't matter. You're Marshall will need two possessions if he can make the first. There it is. Game, set, championship route. That but seals give it. Marshall a lot of credit. Love covering these two ball clubs, folks. River Rouge and Marshall. Both champions. Both will be proud of the trophies they display in their showcases at school. Darby's follow good as the horn sounds. 60 to 54. River Rouge, their 13th title. You feel good for Ben Pierce. A man who is class in every sense of the word. His players have handled themselves so very well in some very difficult times. And Pierce can thank Lofton Green and the support he received from the Panther fans. And what about Marshall? What about Ryan Van Dyke? These Redskins have earned the respect of everybody in this gymnasium today. Yeah, you hate to see a team go down like that, but I mean, they went down fighting. They went down like champions, and they are champions. They just did not win this game. Give Rouge the credit. They took on that me against the world attitude after the suspensions and Lamonte Stone not being able to coach this team in the championships. But that worked for them, and Ben Pierce, what a nice job. An assistant coach ascending to the challenge and getting the job done. There is something to be said about tradition, the tradition that River Rouge has built. There is also something to be said about playing in championship games that Marshall has done in football, in soccer, now in basketball. And you hear the people who supported this team throughout the year and how proud they are, and likewise for River Rouge. Probably the biggest sigh of relief the entire evening from the guys up there making the t-shirts. That's right. They had to wait a long time before they could start pressing those shirts, but they got them done. And the Panthers are celebrating at the Breslin Center. 60 to 54.